Hi guys. Shooting a panorama is pretty straightforward, but there are about a hundred ways you can mess it up. What settings should you use? What is optimal settings for panoramas? Is there are optimal settings? Or for example, if uh, your scene, your, 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 your photo is much brighter on one side than the other, how do you expose for that? What lens? Is there some lens you should not use for a pano? Doing a single row pano is fairly easy, but how, how, how do you do a multi-row pano and how do you stitch that together? And last but not least, what is parallax and how do you avoid it and how do you use a nodal slide? First, let's uh, mention lenses. Um, what lenses are good for pano? It really doesn't matter. You can use just about any lens. Uh, although a fisheye lens would maybe be something I would avoid. I haven't tried it, but you know, I wouldn't use it. Wide angle lenses are fine. Uh, what I use mostly for my pano are, are the holy, it's the holy trinity. It's, uh, it's this lens, it's 16 to 35. That's, a, that's my wide wide lens. Uh, it's great for panos. Uh, my 24 to 70, which is shooting this video, and of course my 70 to 200, if I can't get close enough. Even uh, 100 to 400, if things are really far away. But for some reason, uh, it is in people's mind that a mid-range zoom is somewhat optimal for a pano. 24 to 70. It's not wrong, but you can you can use any lens. Uh, there are just a few things you have to have in mind, especially when you shoot wide angle. Because with a wide angle, you can start to get parallax. And I'm gonna explain to you how what that is and how to avoid it. But first I'm gonna show you how to do a multi-row panorama with my 70 to 200. Some might say, why use so much zoom for a pano? Well, if you need to get closer and you can't walk, it's pretty simple. But it is also, if you need higher resolution file, if you, if you, if you need to, if you get an order for a print that's like 10, meters times five or 10 by 10 meters. It's a huge print. Uh, doing that with a single shot uh, in an average DSLR camera, it's, it's gonna be, it's not gonna look very good, but you can do that with a panel. Like in this case, this is, this, this, this is on the Glacier Lagoon and this ice is a bit far away. And, uh, and also I wanted the mountain in the background not to be tiny, I wanted it to be big. So I zoomed in to the far ice and, uh, and uh, the mountain. Um, well, I could have done it differently. I could have done it with a little wider lens and just cropped the photo. Why didn't I do that? Well, because of resolution. The cropped file would have been fine to post on Facebook, let's say, but uh, uh, if you want to make a big print, you know, like this one is three meters by one, uh, then the cropped file would be useless. It, was, it would be too pixelated and blurry, just too small. So I did a panel. This is like a nine photo single row panel. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go outside and I'm gonna uh, uh, shoot uh, a multi-row pano with my 70 to 200. And I'm also gonna take a single file, just with a wider lens, just a single photo, uh, crop it the same way and show you the difference between those two files. But before I do, I wanna make a small plug. I wanna present to you my print gallery. Uh, I'm working, I'm in the process of putting a lot of stuff online. Uh, if you need a beautiful print for whatever you need it, for personal or business use, check it out. Uh, if you see something you like, you know, this is one of the ways uh, I support myself 
uh, to be able to offer free content like this for you guys. So I would appreciate it if you are in need of a print. Take, check out the link, it is in the description. Okay, so now I'm set up and uh, what I do first is I plan. I'm gonna do um, a two row panorama. I don't know, I guess it's about eight to 10 uh, photos in a row, I guess 10. And uh, so it's two rows. So planning is very important. You need to know where you start and where you end because then you have to go back. Um, and if you have uh, two rows, you have to go back twice, three rows, three times. So you have to know where to start and where to finish. Uh, but first, when you set up, you, you, you put your camera on and you, you, you set. Everything is manual. Everything is manual, even focusing. No autofocus. You focus on your subject, like that, and then I turn off autofocus. If, 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 uh, I, I, I use the back button focus on my camera so that I don't have to do it, but if you focus with your shutter, you need to turn off autofocus. So everything is manual, uh, focus is manual, uh, white balance is manual, speed, aperture, everything. So how do I set my camera? I set my camera, but first, I, I like to have everything tack sharp, so I, I, I will just uh, stay at my camera's up, uh, my, my, my lens's optimal f-stop, which in this case is between eight, 8 and 11. So I'm at 9 now. I'm at ISO 100 for optimal image quality. Speed in this case, it's daylight, it's bright, speed doesn't matter. So I'll just watch my histogram and adjust the speed until I'm uh, exposed. All right, so uh, everything is manual and I do a test run. I set, I set the, um, how I want it, the, the, the start frame. I'm gonna shoot from uh, right to left. The top row is gonna be from, from right to left. Then I'm gonna go down and shoot from left to right back. So I'm not going to go back and switch back. I'm going to just start where I ended. All right. So I test and I watch the histogram to see because I re it, it's it's a long it spans a, it spans a big area. So uh, it could be a little bit different. The light uh, to the far uh, 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 right than to the far left. So what you do is you expose for the brightest spot on your uh, on your scene and uh, if that's not enough if if the uh, the difference is so great that you need that you that, that you're either clipping the highlights or the shadows on either side then you need to expose your stack uh, that's uh, there's a video here in the corner you can you can see how to do that but I'm not gonna explain that here this is enough for now, for now. So, I check everything here is focused and I have my landmark spot. This is my starting and this is my uh, end. So, I'm gonna start. I will use uh, remote triggering because it's very important when you do a, 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 a photo which is based on, made of many photos, if you slightly shake the camera or move the car camera in one photo of the uh, 16 or 20 photos we're going to make, it's ruined, it's, it's done, so you can use it. If one photo is, uh, is blurred, you cannot use the panel. So I, I'm gonna use that. Or you can also, if you don't have this, you can use a two second timer. All right, so I'm gonna start here. Uh, set my focus, I have everything, uh, histogram is good, so uh, I shoot, frame one, then I, then I move the camera and uh, I overlap by about 30%, 30 to 50%, so the more you overlap the better, the more files, but uh, the easier it's going to be to stitch the photos together. 
two. Nine. So, I, I finished my top row. It's nine photos. So now I, I shoot the bottom row. So I'm gonna do... Uh, and that's the same. You need to overlap the rows 30 to 50 percent. The photos by 30 to 50 percent and the rows by 30 to 50 percent. All right, so I don't change anything. I cannot change anything, not the focus, not anything. So I just start again and uh, I shoot. I try to hit nine frames also on the way back. So it, it, it goes without saying, to do that you need a tripod. You, you're not going to do this handheld. And also, I would not use any filter. I never use a filter when I do a panel. Especially not a, a polarizing filter. Because what a polarizing filter does, it creates strange shadowing in, in, in the sky. So it it doesn't look good when it when it uh, when it's stitched together so i would i would avoid doing that and uh, a gradient filter in in this case these are two rows so i would not use a gradient filter i'll just uh, make sure when i uh, when i uh, uh, check the exposure that everything that that is not blowing out uh, the highlights or clipping the uh, the shadows and if it does I bracket, bracket rather than use a filter. And I always do a backup, always do a second run. I usually, when I do a, 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 a panorama that complicated, I do it three, four times. Because uh, the chances are you're gonna blow uh, one run is pretty good. So here we are in Lightroom. I have imported the, the files. I did a few runs just to make sure that uh, I had a usable one. And I don't know exactly how many photos are in each one. There was, uh, when I did the video, we did 10. Some had 11 or nine or something, but it doesn't matter. It's just a lot of photos. I'm not gonna show you how to uh, use Lightroom other than that. I'm not gonna edit anything uh, in Lightroom uh, because I have a pretty solid video about Lightroom. It's a whole course, it's three hours. Uh, the link is in the description if you wanna learn Lightroom. But now I'm just gonna show you how to stitch a multi-row panel. I like to put my hand in front of the camera before I start a new one. And when I end the panel, if I'm gonna do another run, because you can see all those files here, they look very similar. So uh, it's uh, it's just a sign for me to know where to start and where to end. So these are 22 photos. So two rows, 11 photos in each row. And I'm gonna right click and uh, photo merge. It's panorama, sorry. There you go, panorama it is. So, uh, Cylindral would be something I use when I'm doing a single row panel. If I'm doing a multi row panel, I usually go for spherical. But you know, you can, you can then always try it and see what, uh, what happens. But uh, spherical uh, is what I'm gonna go for now. And uh, Perspective is another thing. It's for example, if you're gonna if you're doing architecture or stuff like that, and uh, and uh, the lines need to be straight. I also sometimes can use perspective if I'm, do, if I'm doing a a vertorama, like a vertical panorama. But uh, usually it's either of these two. Uh, this boundary wrap is pretty useful. You can see like uh, my tripod was not completely leveled. You can see the white spaces here. If the tripod was completely leveled, I wouldn't have this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stretch it like that. Boom, there we go. 
I can also just crop it in, uh, in, in Lightroom. Uh, there's a lot of way to do this. I'm gonna do it like this. And then I just hit merge. And being a file of this size with 22 photos, it's gonna take a few minutes maybe, it depends on your computer uh, to merge. So here we are, this is the panel I created out of 22 files. And uh, it is, as you can see uh, here in the corner, it's, it's 27,000, over 27,000 times 8,600 pixels. It's a huge file. Look at the level of detail in this. This is just massive. It's here in the distance. You can, you can hardly see. And you, you click on it and, and, and uh, here. Look at that. And to compare it, I also took this photo. This is not a panel. This is just a single shot I did with my 24 to 70. I cropped it uh, basically the same way. Uh, but look at the difference. This is 5,840 times uh, almost 2,000. The other one was like 27,000 times 8,000. 8, and if I click the same spots here, you know, it's there's no deep. You know, it's it's a it's it's a nice photo. It's a, it's good, it's good for something. But uh, if you're gonna print it big, the other one is what you want for that. I heard people talk about sometimes that using a wide angle lens like this one here, like my 16 to 35, is is no good for panels because it's too wide. It creates some distortion or well, whatever whatever reason people uh, think that this is not. Good, but it's not true. It's it's actually a great. I use it for uh, a lot of my panels. Um, there's just a few things you need to keep in mind. But but when do I need a wide angle lens for a panel? For example, here. This is uh, Mount Vastrahot, and uh, I wanted this photo. I, the, you know, the, I wanted a clean reflection of the mountain. I also wanted to include some of the nice clouds you can see above it, and get the reflection of the clouds as well. And you know, basically split the, the you know frame in the middle, get uh, uh, get the perfect reflection uh, from from middle of the frame. But the thing was that water. Uh, it is not, it's not always the same there. Sometimes it's a, a, a huge puddle of water in front of it, sometimes it's smaller. So in this case, the, pro, the water was pretty close to the mountain, so I needed to go close and wide. This is a simple single row panel. This is uh, four to five photos, if I remember correctly. There's no complicated foreground, so there is no parallax to worry about. Uh, simple to shoot and Lightroom has no problem stitching this together. But what do I mean by that? Why can it be complicated for Lightroom or any other software to stitch a photo together that has a complicated foreground close to, to the camera, close to the lens? Because of parallax. But what's parallax? Parallax is defined as the effect where the position or the direction of an object appears to differ when viewed from different positions. But what does that mean exactly? Well, to, to make it simple, what it means is that uh, when my wide angle lens is close to a foreground, then we have a background, uh, when I turn the camera, uh, the view, the direction of the view from the foreground to the background changes a little bit. So we get this parallax effect. What we want is that when we turn the camera, we want the foreground and the background to turn both the view direction the same. But what it does, it does this. Here is a stitch panorama with this parallax problem. I, I, I shot this in Norway. Uh, I'm, I'm actually not that close to the foreground, but it's pretty complicated. And I'm still like pretty close to it, like a meter away. And uh, you know, nice colors, a nice scene, but it's just distorted and it, the, the photo just looks ridiculous. The good news is that this is pretty easy to fix. 
How do you do that? Look, first you need to understand that the rotation point of the camera when you have it on a tripod is like this. It rotates around the sensor of the camera. So the sensor is the midpoint, and then the camera rotates around the sensor, which is not a problem in most cases. But if you're shooting a panel like this, it can be a problem because we got something, what's it, what, what is called a nodal point, like a zero point in the lens, somewhere in the lens. It, it, it differs from, from lens to lens, but it's somewhere here. The, uh, the photo gets in the camera and projects it to the sensor, the zero point, the nodal point. So what we need is the camera to rotate it around this nodal point not the camera back. Okay, so for that, we need a nodal slide. Here's a short video to demonstrate that. So now I'm set up here in my studio and I'm gonna try to explain to you what I mean with nodal point, parallax, and a nodal slider, or the rod, like I uh, choose to call it. When I shoot, let's say from left to right, it can be the other way around also. What you will see is, I'm gonna turn on record here. I have a C stand here right in front of my camera. I have another stand, light stand, directly behind this C stand. And uh, as you can see now, when I turn my camera, now you cannot see the other light stand. And now it's peaking in this direction and it's peaking in the other direction. This is what we call parallax. If I'm shooting, if I'm shooting a, a panoramic picture with a foreground, which is relatively close, and then a background, this is with my foreground and the light stand would be my background, the, uh, the plane would would kind of not be aligned like it should be. So it will be difficult to stitch those uh, images together in post. Uh, may be possible, it depends on uh, how much the distortion is, but even if you can stitch them together, there will always be like some uh, problems with the image you need to fix in Photoshop and it's better just to get it right right off the bat. So now, I'm gonna put on the rod, or the uh, nodal slider, like some people choose to call it. Okay, the uh, image is projected to the sensor of the camera from the lens. So, the image comes into the lens, uh, Somewhere in the lens is a point called a nodal point, nodal point, and uh, it projects in the camera, and then the lens projects it to the sensor. Okay, this needs to be our, our center. So uh, now, when I'm not completely at the camera back like I was, let's say halfway is, so now when I move it, I can still see the light stand peaking behind it, but it's not as much. So, if I put it more, and now I move it, now it's almost not moving, maybe a little bit more. There we go. So, it's different with every lens, and uh, it's nice just to, uh, there's a, you can just to memorize it or put a tape or something on the uh, measurement here so you can uh, remember what uh, the value is for, for each lens. This is really important if you have a, a strong or, or a foreground object that is close. If you're shooting with a, with a zoom lens, something in the, in the distance and there's no real foreground, 
But this, it's not, it doesn't matter. You, know, you don't need to do this with that. But you know, if you have something pretty close to you, like a meter away or something, this is what you should use. It's a simple thing. It's just this little piece of metal. This is from Real Right Stuff. It's surprisingly expensive, but you know, because it's kind of like, yeah, it's just this, but uh, it makes all the different. So remember this photo? When I shot the same photo with the rotation point at the nodal point, not that the camera back, not that the sensor, this is the result. It's great, it's perfect. There's no distortion, no problems for Lightroom to stitch these photos together. So the only thing you need beside a tripod to be able to do this properly is nodal slide. And, uh, and, and know how to use it. And, and this, is what, this is what this video is for. Um, there is a link in the description to the nodal slide I use. Uh, it's a very good one. Uh, it's not the cheapest one, but you know, I, I always advise people from buying cheap stuff like this. It's, it's going to last you for as long as you want to have it. This is real right stuff. I have real right stuff. It's great. And uh, if you are in the market for a nodal slide, I would appreciate if you would use my link. Let's that give me a small percentage of... Uh, the purchase and uh, that helps me keep this channel alive. So I hope this video taught you everything you needed to know about how to make a panel, how to make a multi-row panel, how to use a null slide, what's a parallax, all that jazz. Thank you for watching and goodbye.